Oh no, I can just tell by this waveform this is going to be a disaster. <laughs> there is another open source text-to-speech model out, and just to get it out of the way first and foremost, as I know a lot of folks have this question, yes, you can subscribe to my channel. No, that's not what I was going to say. Um, <laughs> This is only English and Chinese currently, so I know a lot of folks are looking for more multilingual options, and I do just want to report that as basically the first thing. Now, this is called Vox CPM, and this is released by OpenBMB, and it is under an Apache 2.0 license, which is always nice to see, as that is a relatively good open source license, so to speak. Now, if we take a quick look at this we will see that there's not a ton here in the model card about some information about this but we're going to spend most of our time probably just playing with it as i have used it a bit and i will say one of the things i've picked up on the most here in using this is it is relatively quick even on like mid to low range hardware so i'm using a laptop 4060 gpu to run this and the speed of the generations is quite quick considering the hardware that it's being run on so let's just take a little bit of a look at this model and some of the intricacies and interesting pieces of it and then we'll go on and start to test it. So from what we can see right here in the Hugging Face model card, we will see that Vox CPM is a novel tokenizer-free text-to-speech system that redefines realism in speech synthesis. So they talk a little bit more about some like uh, technical considerations and things like that here, but they do also specifically in this first paragraph mention true-to-life zero-shot voice cloning, which is obviously a great way to test these for how well they are actually able to perform. Now, beyond that, they do talk a little bit about its architectural considerations and things like here. And I think really what I will say from this is like, they, this is all very technical jargon. So uses an end-to-end -end diffusion autoregressive architecture that directly generates continuous speech representations from text. Now, it is interestingly enough built on a backbone of a model that they have also released called Mini CPM4. And this is actually interesting. So this is an entire family of LLMs, apparently specifically designed for use on like low resource devices and in efficient manner. So this is just interesting to see as truthfully, I've not really seen a lot about this LLM. So it was also interesting to kind of discover that this is built on something that they themselves have also created, which is cool to see. So going back to here, I think the most important thing to take note of from all of this technical jumbo right here is the implicit semantic acoustic decoupling is basically think of it as like it decouples the emotion or the tonality in the way something is said with the actual like meaning of a word. So I could say basically like, what a great day it is. And we as humans hearing that would understand that I am enthused. But then I could also say like, what a great day it is, which would sound sarcastic. And it just talks about the ability to kind of decouple the words from the actual tonality, basically allowing it to capture the differences in like tone or style of one speech, um, something like that. Perhaps don't like adhere to that very scientifically in trying to believe it or not. But with that, basically, we can go down here now and see some more key features where we have context aware expressive speech generation. So it comprehends the text and generate appropriate prosody delivering speech with remarkable expressiveness and natural flow, which is cool. True to life voice cloning. So this is obviously something we will be testing in depth as it is always very fun to see how well the voice cloning can actually perform. And then finally, something I did touch upon prior is the high efficiency synthesis. This is. So they mention it's great speed here on a 4090 GPU, and I am even having good results with this on a laptop 4060. I do have this already set up and installed. It really was quite easy. I just cloned the repository right here and then installed it just like this in a virtual environment. And once I ran the app.py script, it went ahead and downloaded the model automatically. So no real huge difficulty there, assuming a basic level of understanding of how to get clone and things like that. So let's just go ahead now and run python app.py and we will see everything start to load up and we'll get a web URL to go to. So keep in mind that I am using OBS for screen recording here. So as a default baseline, my GPU is using around 1.6 gigabytes of video RAM. So everything over 1.6, we can consider this to have been using. And if we click on this here, it will go ahead and open. And we do have a default thing right here. Now folks are going to be happy. I did go ahead and kind of fix some of the audio setup. So you will actually be able to hear the generated results as if they were being played like from the computer instead of just through the mic from a speaker. But I did also hook up a speaker so I can hear them as well. And basically now um, 
VRAM utilization we'll keep an eye on, so I'm just going to generate with the default example right here so we can get a measure of the speed and the VRAM utilization. So it's going to warm the model up right here, which we'll see in a second in the terminal, and that's when VRAM will start to jump up a bit more. And this is not a step that needs to occur every time you use it. That's just kind of like the first time you use it that will happen. So we can see right here it's going through and generating. And VRAM, I saw a max there of around 5.5. So say this will use around 4 gigs of video RAM, which is pretty low. So we can play right here. Here is the speech that it will have cloned. Just by listening a few minutes a day, you'll be able to... So just think like that was the voice it cloned and then into this little kind of ad snippet about Vox CPM. Vox CPM is an innovative end-to-end -end TTS model from ModelBest, designed to generate highly realistic speech. So, of course, the default examples are oftentimes not super fun, so we'll go ahead and kind of just move on to more entertaining testing. But again, if anyone wants to use this and you do need some assistance in terms of like actually changing some of these parameters and things like this, they do have this little metaphorical explanation right here of chef's guide or ingredients and things, so that is a really good reference to have. Now, with that, I am going to just close all of these and full screen this, as this will kind of sometimes spit out the actual text of the things you say here so I just would like to have more emphasis on actually using the program than seeing the terminal windows and stuff like that. Now something I noticed that was a little frustrating when well at least for my specific um, silly style of testing is when I actually record my voice here it will automatically transcribe it and then put it in this prompt text box as well so I can't say anything bad or else it will show on the screen um, in text but the transcription is actually quite fast so watch. For today's video, we're going to be taking a look at something that I call a video. I don't know why I said that. All right. So for today's video, we're going to be taking a look at something that I call a video. So we have that. And then also it did really transcribe it extremely quickly. So that was kind of impressive to see. And I suppose we'll use the target text right here as well, just to get a feel for the initial sound of its cloning capability. Vox CPM is an innovative end-to-end -end TTS model from Model Best, designed to generate highly realistic speech. So that's quite good, especially from a very short vocal audio clip here that was obviously recorded quite um, silently, I suppose, just based on these waveforms and things like that. So I do also have to wonder if that recorded it in mono or so, I don't know. But regardless, just to get a first and serious test, that's not bad at all. So let's just go ahead and put in something else here. Now we can do that and this prompt text I find you can actually go ahead and delete that so I am seeking a delivery of 12 freshly baked chicken tendies I am seeking a delivery of 12 freshly baked chicken tendies <laughs> and it's definitely not bad now I don't know how it will really sound to you on camera because or through the video as it will just be like hearing this actual file which will sound better than what I'm hearing from my little studio monitor that's hooked up but overall the realism is not bad at all I am seeking a delivery of 12 freshly baked chicken tendies that does actually sound quite like me um, except I would probably get a little more than 12 chicken tendies now something I find to be kind of fun with this is you can just delete both of these and you can still generate speech and then it will generate it however <laughs> the upside or downside depending on how one wants to use this is each time you do it it will use a completely different voice so <laughs> it can be kind of funny i am seeking a delivery of 12 freshly baked chicken tendies okay so there was a background sound in that that made me sound like it sampled like some live speech or I am seeking a delivery of 12 freshly baked chicken tendies sounds like a presidential speech or something all right but then again if we just try it back to back having it generate it once more we will see that it happens quite quickly especially considering this is an 8 gigabyte laptop GPU but the voice will be completely different now I am seeking a delivery of 12 freshly baked chicken tendies so I'll do it one more time I I was typing in some um adult themes in here earlier and then just having it generate them in different speeches each time was cool. I'm seeking a delivery of 12 freshly baked chicken tendies. It was quite hilarious. So, and this is something, this is an immediate issue that I've been noticing with this through playing with it a bit. So let's just see how well it managed to capture the uh, tonal features of the clone snippet here where I just said that, um, again, some of the clonings we don't show on camera because, you know, now this is definitely taking a bit longer. Oh, again, okay, because it crashed, so it has to warm up.
because this is technically the first time we're using it again in this run. So that explains the increase in length it took to actually generate this first result. All right. I am looking to purchase an NVIDIA 5090 GPU. I can offer the cash price of $43 as well as five shares of MSFT. That is pretty good. Let's, let's do a put the money in the bag or everyone gets it. And then this one will obviously go much quicker because it's already warmed up now. Put the money in the bag or everyone gets is. Oh, I, I misspelled it. That's okay. Let me try. Uh... <laughs> I wonder, let's see if we can make this thing tap out. All right, so I just put in a, a, like the first paragraph of The Great Gatsby, and let's just try to see if it will actually go ahead and generate speech this long. We'll see if it does do that, how well it adheres to the clone voice like through the later part of the speech, as well as keep an eye on VRAM. So right now it is using right around 4 gigs of video RAM. And sometimes there, when it just stops prematurely, that means it's done. So, okay, it did just generate a minute and three seconds of audio. Let's... uh. My younger and more vulnerable years, my father gave me some advice that I've been turning over in my mind ever since. Whenever you feel like criticizing anyone well, he told me to blend. Just remember that all the people in this world haven't had the advantages that you've had. He didn't say any more, but we've always speak. been unusually communicative in a reserved way. And I understood that he meant a great deal more than that. In consequence, I'm inclined to reserve all judgments, a habit that has opened up many curious natures to me and also made me the victim of not a few veteran bores. The abnormal mind is quick to detect and attach itself to this quality when it appears in a normal person, and so it came about that in college I was unjustly accused of being a politician because I was privy to the secret griefs of wild, unknown men. Most of the confidences were unsought frequently I have feigned sleep, preoccupation, or a hostile levity when I realized by some unmistakable sign that an intimate revelation was quivering on the horizon. For the intimate revelations of young men, or at least the terms in which they express them, are usually plagiaristic and marred by obvious suppressions. Reserving judgments is a matter of infinite hope. I am... Okay, first thing to notice, VRAM jumped up to around... It's using around 5 gigs of VRAM now, but I will probably have actually let that play through at like real time speed in its entirety because I was very impressed with a couple of things to note here. First and foremost, it did keep absolute adherence to the style of the clone voice there, which is very correct. And let's keep in mind that the clone voice snippet that I did did sound exactly like it sounds when um, it's reading here. So that is correct. Beyond that, it did a fantastic job pronouncing some of these more less like some of these words this was written in like the 20s so they use vocabulary that's not really commonly seen here like uh, plagiaristic and marred by obvious suppressions like no one talks like that anymore who's not like a tool so <laughs> this just really did a good job both with adherence to the clone voice as well as actually pronouncing some less commonly seen words that i am truly a bit more impressed with than I was prepared to be. I would have kind of guessed like with a longer target text like this in a clone voice, especially with like minimal VRAM, it would probably go crazy towards the end, but it absolutely did not. It did have up speak though, which was quite hilarious. Oi mate, what you want to do later? You got something to say? Come say it then, chap. <laughs> I don't know. All right. And I feel like I'm racing the clock here because I'm worried this is going to crash again. So I want to get as much done before. Give me the graphics card or everyone gets it. That's damn good. <laughs> Give me the graphics card or everyone gets it. Give, Give me the, the graphics, graphics card, card or, or everyone, everyone gets, gets it. it. That sounds quite like me, I will say. Well, it, it sounds like British Bijan, which, you know, <laughs> I want to just do like something. <laughs> Let's just say prompt text, just put a period. All right, this is likely going to be a disaster, but it's always fun to do out of scope tests. Give them the graphics card or everyone gets it. <laughs> Give them the graphics card or everyone gets it. Give them the graphics card or everyone gets it. So that's definitely like an actual example of like the semantic or decoupling thing it said where it's able to pick up on like the kind of the flow of a voice as if it was like a wave and keep it and ascribe its style to this. Because this actually did like. And then. Give them the graphics card or everyone gets it. <laughs> That's an accurate, like, transposition, transposing, tra you know what I mean, to, uh, I want to try. <laughs> so let's just do like a, uh, exclamation points, and then we'll see, this one will obviously happen quite quickly. Uh, uh. 
Okay, well, they did say this was trained on a rather large amount of uh, sound clips, so uh, we can now, let's see if it will clone my voice and then make me speak Chinese. So we can just paste that in right here and then, all right, so we're just going to completely ignore the previous result here and see what happens now. And then we can just go ahead and generate the speech. And again, the target text is in Chinese. I do not know for sure if this has the capability to do this. Um, I would assume it does, but I suppose we'll find out. 可选提供参考声音上传或录制一段音频为声音合成提供音色语调和情感等个性化特征 Sounded good to me. Again, uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I can tell you with decent um, like certainty that that snippet right here just says optional in parentheses and then provide a voice prompt, upload or record an audio clip to provide the desired voice characters for synthesis. So you can see that I can actually read this uh, snippet of text right here, which is quite impressive. So um, let's, uh, oh no, I can just tell by this waveform this is going to be a disaster. <laughs> So here's something that, like, I will say to conclude this video as I fix some of my um, spelling errors. And then I'll clone my voice here once more to get another serious test in. So I'm using this on an NVIDIA 4060 laptop, which is sitting in front of me. And overall, it is a really good laptop. It's one I've had for a while, and I have no intention of getting rid of it. Okay. And obviously here, again, this transcription in and of itself is quite impressive, especially the speed which it does it that's like worthy of its own exploration. But I did now paste in kind of like a closing thought here with my clone voice. And you'll notice that I have not like um, touched these at all. And I don't want to, especially this one, considering that I'm on a weaker card and it's been doing well. Maybe we'll mess with the CFG after this. So that's going to conclude our testing of Vox PM. Overall, this is a very impressive model that does a great lob with pronunciation and low resource settings. Great lob. I said that. Oh, so I spelled it wrong, and it did a good job of picking off my mistake. That is a great lob. All right, so let's first try it all the way up. Okay, so the kind of the span of potential values there is quite low, being 1 to 3, but that's okay. So that's going to conclude our testing of Vox PM. Overall, this is a very impressive model that does a great lob with pronunciation and low resource settings. All right, and then we'll try one with the CFG on the lowest setting to give it the most creative freedom of expression. So that's going to conclude our testing of Fox PM. Overall, this is a very impressive model that does a great lob with pronunciation and low resource settings. All right, that was disturbing. All right, well, that is going to wrap up what is undoubtedly going to be a shorter test of Vox CPM. Overall, this is impressive and definitely worthy of testing if you have like an 8 gig card like this. Truly, if you have a 6 gig card, you might be able to like squeak it by, but I don't know how confident I would feel on that. But for the size and the amount of resources that it uses, as well as the speed in which it actually generates, it is quite impressive. In addition to that, I was very happy to see the longer generation test because it did a really good job pronouncing some less common words and beyond that it kept absolute adherence to the clone voice throughout the entire minute of generated text so that was really cool and impressive to see i suppose that is going to wrap it up if you have any questions please feel free to leave them in the comments and subscribe and with that thanks for watching